Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be reviewing evolutionary inference with Dr. Brett Weinstein and Dr. Heather Hying on the Peterson Academy. So, I enjoyed this course quite a bit. Unlike Skepticism 101, which I thought was abysmal, very shallow, I was dreading it the entire time I was taking it, this one was a lot of fun. Now I will say, I need more biology courses on the Peterson Academy. I need like 10 or 15 to get to like a bachelor's level grasp on the subject. I don't know if I'll ever get there because again, this is an online university to learn about biology, evolution, all that stuff. You kind of need to get a little bit hands on. You got to do some experiments, some lab work. You also need textbooks. So it's a little bit difficult, but I thought that this course was a fantastic introduction course to thinking in an evolutionary mindset, right? Evolutionary inference. So um, yeah, I can't wait to talk about this one today. As always, I'll go through the synopsis on the Peterson Academy website first. Then I'll talk about the quizzes, the lectures themselves, and the recommended books. I'll give you guys my concluding thoughts, and then we'll wrap up for today. So the synopsis on the Peterson Academy website. In Evolutionary Inference, a nine-hour course, Dr. Hying and Dr. Weinstein explore fundamentals of the biology of evolution, providing tools to interpret the natural world through the lens of evolutionary inference. They examine various organisms and their adaptations from leaf cutter ants to sea otters, highlighting how these traits are evolutionary answers to environmental challenges. The course also delves into the reconstruction of deep evolutionary history through phylogenetic trees and the unique characteristics that set humans apart, such as culture, consciousness, and language raising profound questions about our ability to transcend genetic imperatives for a better future. So yeah, every time that I get into biology, my curiosity is just sparked. Uh, it's one of those subjects that I tend to neglect. I'm more interested in philosophy, theology, psychology, and even when it comes to the hard, sciences, hard sciences, I tend to I tend to gear more towards physics and mathematics. So I tend to neglect chemistry and biology and whenever I come back to it, I'm like, damn, I really need to put some more time into studying this because every time that I take up learning about organisms and how they adapt to the world around them, learning about different species, it's so interesting to me. And these lectures did a fantastic job of kind of getting you to think about the world in an evolutionary mindset. So one thing that they were really stressing throughout this course is that if you look at a species and you see that there's a big difference between the male and female species, that there's an adaption there for sexual selection. And if you see some sort of trait that seems to be species wide and it's not, it's not specific to one gender, then that's an evolutionary trait that's meant to push that species forward or, or to adapt it to find food or, or something like that. So that was interesting. And then kind of how they expanded on those topics was, was deeply fascinating. Obviously, I'm not a scientist, so I can't talk about it as well as they can. But it was so interesting for them to take apart these little case studies, whether it's the leaf cutter ants or they talked about lemurs at one point. They talked about frogs a lot and just taking them apart and how they've adapted to the environment around them was very interesting. And then Heather did a great job of kind of laying out the history of evolution and kind of where we've come from and how does the tree branch off and you know how did we how did we evolve to fly and how did we evolve mammals out of out of fish and, and it was so interesting and I highly recommend everybody should take this course even if you're like a really hard hard religious person and you don't really care for evolution and you think it's all bs I would seriously take this course because I don't know this is this might sound arrogant and I don't want it to sound that way I truly mean this but for me my religious beliefs and my scientific beliefs, they mesh. Like, they, they never contradict each other. I, even since a little kid, I, I, I've had troubles with it, you know, trying to connect God with science. And that's kind of why I became an atheist for a while. But eventually, I kind of 19, 20 years old, it kind of clicked for me. And I'm like, oh, now I, I kind of see how it all overlays on top of each other. And it makes sense with each other. So that's a big goal of my channel is to help explain that, to help draw the draw the blueprint at least for the bridge between science and religion because i don't think that you can ever do that um, perfectly so that everybody kind of gets it and again i don't know if i'll ever be able to articulate myself well enough to explain how it makes sense to me but in my mind evolution doesn't contradict religion at all to me it it fits in perfectly so if you are kind of a more hard religious sort of person i would take this course just to get just to get, well, an idea of the other side, but I wouldn't think about, about it that way. I would just get an idea of what we've figured out and how it, how it, um, 
I don't know, it expresses God's beauty to me. Like when I learn about evolution, when I learn about biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, whatever it might be, to me, it connects me deeper to God. Like I see more of God's beauty that way. So yeah, I think everybody should take this course. It was, it was so great. I thought that the, the, the two of them did a fantastic job. I hope they do more courses in the future. Like I said, I probably need like 10 or 15 biology chemistry courses till I feel like I got like a decent enough grip on it. I don't know if I'll ever become an expert in those fields. I'll, I'll always be pushing towards that, but they're, they're very complicated fields. And I would love a course where we could go from basically the start of life to today and just do a timeline course. This course was that in ways, but it jumped around a lot and it was using case studies and it was still a fantastic course, don't get me wrong, but I would love to see a course where we start from life and we kind of walk ourselves through through the timeline and see where the tree branches off, why it branches off. Again, you could maybe do some case studies. Maybe this is too big in scope. Maybe they did the course this way for a reason. Maybe what I'm suggesting is just too large. It would be like a 30 lecture long course. Maybe I'll do it eventually on my channel and take a stab at it. I don't know, but, but yeah, I would love to see something like that. I would love to see more courses kind of going into specific, specific families of animals too. Like I would love to see a course just on monkeys, you know, and how they've evolved and what evolved past them. So yeah, I just hope to see more from these two. So I'm going to talk about the recommended books now. So we'll go over those. So there are three recommended books for this course, the first of which is A Hunter-Gatherer's Guide to the 21st Century by Heather Hyring and Brett Weinstein. So now that I've taken this course, I'm very interested in reading their writings and just diving deeper into biology. Like I said before, every time that I take a biology course, it just sparks my curiosity and I want to dive deeper because I do feel like I neglect it sometimes. The next book is Richard Dawkins' The Selfish Gene. I did read this book about seven or eight years ago now, sometime in high school, I think. At that time, Dawkins was one of my heroes. It was like him and Hitchens and Sam Harris and a perverted view of Nietzsche and a bunch of other things. But I thought I kind of had a grasp on the whole world. I thought I could figure it all out. I had almost like a Michael Shermer mindset. And uh, and since then, I've actually changed my views on on a few things. So I do want to come back to The Selfish Gene. I think it's a fantastic book. The first time that I read it, I was utterly convinced of it. Going back to it, I'm not going to say that I would be like, I'm not convinced of it or, or think that it's now false. I think that a lot of the things that Richard Dawkins laid out in that book is definitely true, but I want to go back to it and re-engage with it sometime soon. So uh, that's going on my reading list, not my, my wish list. I think I do have a copy of that book kicking around somewhere here. If I don't, I'll definitely go pick it up because, again, that's just one of the staples of biology books, right? So Evolutionary Ecology is the next book by Eric Planka. I've never heard of that book, and uh, I'm excited to pick it up eventually. It's probably not going to be too high on my wish list, though, I, I have to say, because my wish list is like several hundred books long now, especially with the Peterson Academy. So I don't know when I'll get around to reading that one, but we'll see. It's going somewhere on the wish list, that's for sure. Next up, I want to go over the lectures and share with you guys which ones were my favorite. So the first lecture was Curiosity in Evolution. The second was macroevolution. The third was evolutionary in ingenuity. The fourth was adaptive evolution. The fifth is ant farms and poison frogs. The sixth is tactics and trade-offs. The seventh is adaptive organisms. And the eighth is omega principle. So out of those, I think my favorite were probably the uh, frog one. The, what was it called? Ant farms and poison frogs. That one was very interesting. A lot of unique case studies, things that I didn't know. And the last one, Omega Principle, really connected everything together. And they did a really great job at presenting evolution as hard science while also leaving some room there for God. And I thought that that was just very well done. I, I thought that the way that they talked about consciousness at the end was terrific. And yeah, honestly, all of the lectures were fantastic, but probably number five and number eight were, were my favorites. So let's go over the quizzes real quick, because the quizzes on this course were probably some of the most difficult on the entire academy. I would say this course is probably top five for most difficult quizzes. There are some, there are some definitions that you need to remember, some key terms. There's not so much numbers that you need to remember, not as many. I would say that probably cosmology and neuroscience are still more difficult in terms of their quizzes so far, but this was still, um, 
this was still a little bit more challenging. I got a couple got a couple questions wrong, which I don't like to do. So definitely take some notes. If there's any terms that pop up that you're not familiar with, write them down. Write down anything that sticks out to you, and I'm, I'm sure you guys will do just fine. So I like I said before, I will have a video out soon going over the exams. I've taken a couple of them now, so I want to highlight exactly how they work and how I would go about studying for them. So I should have a video out on that uh, in the near future. So yeah, overall, I would say that this is a fantastic course. If you want a, a course that kind of gets you into the mindset of thinking about the world in an evolutionary way, evolutionary inference, right? Um, I think that this was a fantastic course. It goes deep. It uses terrific case studies and examples to detail out their points. And I didn't really have any problems with this course at all. I think I might have slightly preferred Brett's presentation only because he's a, he's a little bit more soft and gentle. Heather's a, a little bit colder. I, I don't want to call her cold because she, she did a fantastic job and she seems like a lovely person, but a little bit more rigid. You know, Brett's a little bit more personable, but I thought they both did a fantastic job. I think, again, they both had kind of their different areas of expertise. I think I would actually say that I learned more from Heather's lectures than Brett's, but Man, they were all awesome. Every single lecture. I can't wait for more from these guys. I know some people don't really like Weinstein or, or Weinstein. I don't even know how to say his name properly. I know that I always miss say it because it's not supposed to be like Harvey Weinstein. So I think it's Weinstein. So I apologize, Brett, for mispronouncing your name. But um, I know some people aren't the biggest fan of Brett or his brother, Eric, for their political views mostly is what I see online. I don't really go to scientists for my political <laughs> views. I don't go to anybody for my political views. So that's just one thing that I'll throw out there. There's not one single person on the planet that I go, you know what? I align with everything you say. Jordan Peterson might be the closest, but I've already made a video on some problems that I have with him. I don't ally align with him on everything. There's no human being alive that I do. Otherwise, I would be literally the definition of a sheep and not my own person. So. I don't really agree with Brett or Eric on everything that they say politically, but like I said, I, I usually go to historians when I want to kind of get a, get a sense or get a sense of where my political views stand. If I want to, you know, reaffirm them because that's usually what people do. They reaffirm their political views. They don't tend to challenge them, but I usually take a real politic approach when I look at politics, which is very cold. Yeah. <laughs> I would not ask me about any political situation in the world right now because I'm usually against the grain. I'm usually against what the masses go towards because, like I said, I take a very real politic approach. I tend to zoom back and look at history as a whole, but that just comes from somebody who reads a lot of history. And I would not say that I have um, a sharp political mind or, or I should be commenting on politics. I think most people shouldn't. I think even though I've read, you know, hundreds of books about politics and world history and, and all that stuff, I still think that I'm pretty stupid when it comes to politics. I have things that I'm like, okay, I'm 100% grounded in this. This like aligns with my morals and my religious beliefs. And if anybody pushes me on this, I know where I stand. But there are other things that I'm like, I really don't know, man. I don't have enough information. So I tend to not push my political beliefs out there. And I also don't want to influence anybody in any sort of way. Again, if I'm pushed on anything, I will tell you guys kind of where I stand firm, where I plant my heels in the ground, because there are a couple things like that. But for the most part, for the most part, like I've said many times before, I like to keep politics and negative stuff off my channel. Uh, I know I just did a negative review of Michael Shermer's course on the Peterson Academy, but I apologize, Michael. It was noth nothing personal. It's just that the course was abysmal. It was it was a bad course, but but this course was fantastic. Evolutionary infer inference um, was it worth it? Absolutely. I think everybody should take this. Um, I don't want to repeat myself any more than that. So we'll wrap it up there for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share with your friends to help boost this channel and the algorithm. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.